we're going to be solving more Newton's second law problems in one dimension. I've written Newton's second law here in suggestive form. The vector sum of all the forces on one object is equal to the mass of that one object times the acceleration of that one object. A typical problem might look like this. Alice is part of an outer space mining colony of an Earth-like planet where g is equal to 10 meters per second squared. Ah, isn't that convenient? <laughs> she is being lifted by a rope with a wench that delivers 1,500 newtons of tension force. Alice and her gear have a mass of 100 kilograms. What is her acceleration? The first place to start, of course, is with a picture. Clearly, it doesn't have to be a good picture, but it needs to represent visually what's happening in the problem. I have Alice is being pulled up by a rope. Next, I need to identify an object. I want to apply Newton's laws to this problem, and so I need to identify a single object. That seems pretty clear in this. My object is going to be Alice. Now, I want to find all the forces on that object. Forces have to come from an agent in physical contact with the object, or gravity. So we only have two in this case, force due to the rope, which is a tension, and the force due to gravity. I've called T and F sub G, and I've given them the vector signs. You can use whatever you want, but you want labels that mean something to you. So you, when you see them, you see the words they represent, and not just random letters. So next I want to sum the forces, and I'll start with a free body diagram. A free body diagram represents the object as a point, and the vectors pointing in their appropriate directions with the tail at the point representing the object. And so I have that here with the tension pointing up and the force of gravity pointing down. A key thing you need on a free body diagram always is a positive axis. So here I've identified the positive axis up. So now I want to be able to to sum these vectors. So I've written down explicitly the vector form of these forces, their magnitude and their direction. The magnitude of the gravitational force is m times g, the mass times the acceleration due to gravity, and it is pointing down. The tension has some magnitude, which I just call t, and it is pointing up. Given my choice of coordinate system, the gravity is pointing in the negative x direction, and the tension is pointing in the positive x direction. This is really helpful because we can use our easy notation for one-dimensional vectors. The sum of these vectors is equal to mass times acceleration, which is also a vector. It has a magnitude of the mass times the magnitude of the acceleration, and it has some direction that we'll find later. So it's easy to extract a scalar expression from this vector sum in one dimension, where the sign indicates the direction of the vector. So the tension has a positive sign, and it's added to the force due to gravity mg, which has a negative sign, and that's equal to the m times the acceleration. That now is just represented by an equation. And can we solve? Do we know everything? We know tension, we know mass, we know acceleration due to gravity. The only thing we don't know is a, so we can use this equation to solve. Note I don't plug in any numbers until I know I can solve the expression. Here I plug in numbers for all the expressions, and I'm not going to go to my calculator. I'm going to do all the easy math on paper to help eliminate calculator error. 100 times 10 is 1,000, 1,500 minus 1,000 is 500, equal to 100a. Acceleration is equal to 5 meters per second squared. This might be something there, eh, I could have done this faster, I could have skipped a bunch of those steps. Yeah, sure, and... When you get good at that, I encourage you to solve them as fast as possible. But right now, we want to make sure we practice all of the steps, because when things get hard, all we have is Newton's second law and a strategy to help apply that physics to our problems.